Okay, welcome everyone to my continuation of what is representation theory. Today I would like to tell you about the, the elements. So the elements of representation theory, as I'm trying to explain uh, the philosophy behind simple representations. Um, so terminology here is simple representations, sometimes called irreducible. I will come back to that. So um, if you have seen them under the name irreducible, that's really just the same. Some people say simple, some people say irreducible. You will see in a second why I prefer simple, but that's of course a matter of taste. Anyway, so the point I would like to sell here is that these are the elements of the theory, the basic building block, or as I like to say, the simplest possible representations. That's why I prefer simples, but okay, fine. And by the way, I will also say sim just simples sometimes instead of simple representations, uh, just because it's even shorter. <laughs> so simples uh, are the elements. So kind of the idea, uh, so here's the per old periodic table, the first periodic table of elements. It doesn't quite look like a periodic table as we are used to, but you can already see some of the usual patterns here. Um, and kind of the whole point of the periodic table or this organization of the periodic table uh, during that time was, as you can see, as some question marks, and they come from the guest structure of the periodic table and some other question marks, and they were filled in pretty, pretty quickly, actually. So the table kind of told us or told um, the, the researchers, the chemists, what kind of elements are still missing. And this is also partially why I would like to write down the periodic table of simples that I'm going to explain. And the other reason is, of course, it's just a list, right? In some sense, it's a nice organization of a list, and lists are always good, uh, at least nicely organized lists. Of course, just a random list with random data is not really, really useful. But a nicely organized list is always good. And here's the analogy I would like to sell. I hope you like it. It's certainly not my analogy. It's well known, um, but some people probably just don't like it. So anyway, I hope you will like it. So I like to play the following analogy here. So I have chemistry on the left-hand side and I have representation theory on the right-hand side. And for comparison, I put in group theory because of those, of course, this analogy makes sense in other parts of mathematics as well. So in chemistry, you have something like matter, right? Or whatever, matter. And on the side of representation theory, I think this corresponds to representations, right? So the things you would like to study and elements in terms of chemistry, that's what I'm going to explain, corresponds to simple representations. And the simpler substances in chemistry, there will be a certain theorem, which we won't see today, but there's a nice theorem. It's called the jordan hölder theorem. Um, so it kind of tells you that all, uh, well, all of matter is built out of uh, elements. That's what you would like to do. So all of reps is built out of simple reps. Yeah, that's the analogy here. And of course, then the periodic table, the list of, oh, here are all the possibilities, and maybe there's some even nicer way to organize it, would be the classification of simple representations. So that's the main goal in some sense of representation theory is for a fixed whatever, group, algebra, whatever you like to study, write down the periodic table of simple representations. The simple representations, in my well, that's why I like, as I said, that's why I like the word simple, are the simplest possible representations. It doesn't mean they're easy, they're just the simplest possible, right? So it doesn't, simplest possible doesn't mean easy, it could still be of dimension 5 million and 12, could be the simplest possible if you're really unlucky. That's possible. And some, some algebras actually don't even have any single uh, simple finite dimensional simple representation. So uh, the simplest possible in those cases would be something infinite. So simple is a little bit, all I'm trying to say here, let me try again, is that simple is not meant as easy, but simple is meant as simple as possible. Okay, that's why I like the word simple. And well, whatever they are, we need to def still define them. I think they just should play the role of elements of the theory. And that's kind of the philosophy why you would like to define them. And of course, as I said, you can do that in any, in, in any branch of mathematics. So for example, for groups, you would talk about simple groups, kind of exactly the same analogy. That was the basic building blocks of your theory. And what you really like to do is to write down the periodic table. Okay, so let's jump into an example, um, keeping in mind that we would like to find the simplest possible of a certain type, in this case, representations. So here is my running example for, for now. Um, so Z mod three, the action on the Finnish street sign, the Finnish roundabout sign. 
And here, the matrices for the corresponding action. I hope you remember that from one of the previous videos. And this is the action, so the identity action, uh, the first rotation, the second rotation, and the corresponding matrices. So that is, this is matter, right? And now we would like to understand whether matter contains is actually an element. So I give you a stone, and I would like to know is it stone an element or not. Um, usually what happens, of course, if I pick something random, I shouldn't find an element. So if I give you a random stone, it's very unlikely actually that it is uh, an element and the same usually happens for representation. So a random representation usually is not simple. Why should it, right? And this one, maybe this one is not really a random representation. I should be careful what I call random anyway, but this representation is not simple. It's a simpler one. And the simpler one is just given by looking at the eigenvector of all of those matrices and just look at the matrices, kind of one, one, one is kind of the obvious eigenvector, the obvious common eigenvector of all of these matrices. So this eigenvector actually spends a smaller representation, a, a simpler substructure, uh, just, just the span of that eigenvector. That's just what it is. Why is it the simpler substructure? Well, because you, it's still a representation. You just don't run out of your, your vector. It's an eigenvector. You always just get a scalar multiple of that vector. So the above representation cannot be an element. There's a simpler substructure somewhere. And yes, I would kind of like to um, also sell you the philosophy that's, that eigenvectors or kind of generalized systems of eigenvectors for those matrices, this is kind of what is a sub-representation, right? So because then you can't just, eigenvector basically means you can't jump out of where you ended in. Um, a sub-representation in general, I should warn you, could be more bigger. It, that doesn't need to be of dimension one. And then it's kind of a generalization of an eigenvector system, if you want. But anyway, this representation certainly has an eigenvector. So it certainly has a sub-representation. So it's certainly not an element. And here's another reason why this shouldn't be an element, kind of the same trick. So if I do take all of those matrices from before, so these are just these three matrices, just the extra matrices from before, and I do a base change on them simultaneously, right? I'm, I'm, I'm not base changing a matrix, I'm base changing a bunch of matrices, all matrices in my representation. Um, by this matrix, I explained in a second where that comes from, you can actually see the sub-representation I, I was mentioning before given by the the eigenvector, which is just this block entry here. And this is really a decomposition. So here's another block, which is a second, uh, second block in this representation. So this representation splits into two blocks, or at least into two blocks. So this can't be simple. Kind of the, the simpler representation should be the minimal blocks in a representation. So this certainly should be a simpler representation. So base change basically verifies that this thing has at least two substructures. Uh, the, the one given by the eigenvector and it, it's, it's complement basically. And this, well, by construction is what is called the trivial representation. Why is that a trivial representation? Because everything acts as one. As you can see, this eigenvector is an eigenvector of eigenvalue one for all of these matrices. So everything acts as one. That's what people call the trivial representation. And the way I constructed this matrix is as follows. So it's, it's basically the, a base change matrix such that my eigenvector is one of the, um, the elements of my basis. So that's why I put my eigenvector in the first, first column. And then I try to find some complement in the sense that um, the pairing here. So the calculation here is this one, one times one. I should, I should be uh, really precise, times minus one times one, right? So just the pairing of the vectors in the corresponding, what is it, the column. And this is zero for both of those columns. And this is what forces the block decomposition. So um, all I did is kind of wrote down some sense of an orthogonal basis. It's not quite orthogonal. That's why uh, those blocks still stick together. Because here, as you can see, the, 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 the second two, or the second and the third vector, they don't pair to zero. They have a non-trivial scalar product. But the first end, so the red and the green block, they are kind of separated. And that's why you see this nice uh, block separation of the matrices and saying that those are not simple representations, they have smaller representations. Hope that makes some sense. Um, and then the definition is just exactly what you think it would be. A subspace is invariant if your group action just gets, gets you back to where you started, like my eigenvector, just a generalized eigenvector type thing. 
and you call a representation simple. Well, let's say it's not zero. A zero representation is a little bit boring, but um, you call it simple if it is only not. It has only sorry trivial substructures, and the trivial substructures are of course uh, zero and the space itself. And these are really the elements of the theory. And then what we would like to do is, of course, find a periodic table of simple representations. And well, here's a periodic table, maybe in a more modern one. You organize the periodic table in a nice way, which actually tells you a little bit more about the represent, or sorry, the representations, the elements. And as we will explain, or as I try to explain later in later videos, there's a similar picture for uh, the simple representations that you organize in a certain nicer way, which is usually called uh, a character table. We'll see what that means, but it's some kind of nice organization of the representations. So in this case, this is a symmetric group with three elements. And as we will see, it has three simple representations, trivial one, a sign representation, and a so-called standard representation. And there are some additional, um, well, values, numbers associated to them, very similarly as in the periodic table. It's more than just a collection of elements, it's elements plus some properties organized in the table. And we do exactly the same thing in representation theory uh, with the simple modules playing the role of the elements. As I said, a matter of warning here, a lot of people say irreducible instead of simple. Again, my point would be, well, irreducible also makes sense. It's, you can't reduce it anymore, but I like this analogy of the simplest possible representation. Uh, but whatever you prefer, just be warned that I will use simple uh, all of the time. Um, anyway, so I could have done actually better in my uh, example here, which is still the same example. So instead of uh, using, well, I'm still using this vector, but then I could actually do it in this case, um, a really an honest orthogonal decomposition. It looks a little bit trickier because you need some square roots and some eyes. So it's not so trivial, but as you can see, uh, the, the block down here um, actually splits even further. So you have the trivial block up here, um, and you have the next block here, and the next block here. And then you actually can see that the first representation had three elements inside, not just not just at, at least two, as I uh, showed you before. Um, the, the way I, the reason I would like to well, first promote P and then Q is that Q is certainly much harder. And you can already see that there might be something uh, non-trivial going on with respect to the entries of the field. And what really happens here is those are the roots of unities and these are all the solutions to this equation, X cubed equals one, which of course underlying equation defining Z mod three. And all of these are one dimensional. Just a matter of warning here, simple representations need not to be of dimension one. We will see examples later on. Anyway, um, the point of this video is was kind of to try to sell this philosophy, simple equals elements, goal, write down a periodic table, uh, maybe decorate it with some nice numbers. There you go, character table, that's what it's called in representation theory. I hope you really like this analogy. I'm a big fan. I'm personally a big fan of this analogy. I'm going to push that a little bit further um, at one point. But uh, for now, just I hope you like the analogy. And I hope you like the video. And I also hope to see you next time.